guys can do whatever you want. Fixing the hairdo. Whose music? Mine. We'll let that one stay like down. Well, actually, let's fix that one too. Mom? Well, the veil will down. Is anyone fortunate enough to have pockets in their dress? No. no. Darn. I wish. <laughs> it wasn't like I need a pocket, I was just curious. <laughs> and uh, speaking of carrying things, I yeah, was curious, thing. honestly. Whoever it is that's going to gonna hold you. the rings, okay. okay, they decided that Zach isn't going to hold them. You're not going to hand them to Zach. You're just going to hand Anthony's oh. ring to me. Yeah. And Russell will hand it mine to Do you want me to give? Your ring and hold it till I give it to Russell, or are you? Yeah, I just want to watch. No, you're. I mean, you're giving it to me. And no, I meant. Like, how is Russell getting? Before we go down the aisle, Russell will have the ring for Anthony. You'll have the ring for. Yeah. But I'm holding. Yeah, I have them now. So. Yeah. So I'll just get it. Well, yeah. Then, this or I'll put it around. I. Okay. Does it I'm gonna bring it. We all have like very similar. Like, Mine are blue. I told them all to get gold, glittery. Kind of blue. Yeah, I love these. I'm not going to stay on it very long. Not the day for that, huh? Really that funny of a picture. Heather, what did... Do you remember the call I made to you and I was really hysterical about Anthony not talking to me? Yes. Yeah, it was like the summer one. after we graduated and Emily, like I was like trying to stay up to date on the Emily and Anthony situation. Cause, like we knew that we they weren't dating. Like they weren't officially dating, but they definitely were, like liked each other and Aww. like were like about to. But Emily was like stressing out because Anthony went to New Hampshire. Well, yeah, New Hampshire, and he didn't have any service. Oh, so he turned it so it like basically it looked like he ghosted completely. Oh. And I was like, uh, this is not really like Anthony. I don't know why he's not texting you back. This is because so he has weird. no service. And it turned out, yeah, and he just didn't have any service and Oh they changed, they brought it out. <laughs> and I was pretty upset. And then, yeah, like scared to like yeah. make things serious because like what's going on. Send it to your mom. Yes. But it worked out. And then I remember like we all went out one time like to I guess it was like That's so sweet. Um, Thank you, Danielle. Oh yeah, that was the first weekend we were dating yeah. yeah. that um, like so Matt had a cowboy bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the yeah. mall there and yeah. like, it was like we had a drink special going on. I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It was not Georgetown, but it was like oh, the mix of us in Georgetown, like Foggy Bottom area. Yeah. We saw pictures from that night. Yeah. yeah. I really like that, like, of all the pictures. Mm-hmm. Well, like, do you remember, like, basically, almost exactly a year ago, like, when we went to that modest house concert, we were driving there, and you were, like, you were having, like, a total fit about Anthony not wanting to get married yet. Yeah. 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 And I was just yeah. trying to, like, yeah. bring you down. I was yeah. like, but why do you need to get married right now? And you're like, because I want to. Why are you being realistic? Yeah, I'm not feeling very bad. I know. Calling Anthony up and be like, Anthony, get with the oh, program. <laughs> Wait, you should, you should do that or redo all that us, one right now. Like, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take that yeah, for you. Do you love her or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take take one, one for the team. We have like a graduation too. So <laughs> we're gonna make oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, this one, right? Yes. Yeah, and then there's one that's holding I mean, it was a little bit about me too, though. I'm starting to plan. We're gonna get we the did. ball rolling. We did, like on the sly, because yeah. we need time. I don't know. Yeah, wasn't that sly? Well, well, that sly. <laughs> well, the wedding dress and the venue. We had <laughs> and the venue. I remember, like, 
Oh, and the venue. I remember. Yeah. I remember what you told me you booked the venue. Yeah. And you were like, what? <laughs> but you had to do the wedding dress because you were in Savannah. What else? You always thought that he was like, always I mean, like, slow down. Yeah. Stop. But it was like, I feel like at that point it was pretty obvious that he was going yeah. to. Yeah. It was just a matter well, of like, which weekend. Yeah. Like, and you were like looking cute like every time you know. Like, you know. A lot of parts. You're like, I'm so tired of being cute. <laughs> so she's. 36 weeks tomorrow. All of the She's Snapchats. She's going to drop that baby. <laughs> 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 Katie was like that too when she got engaged. Like, yeah. She's like, every time she came home, she was oh like, Oh my gosh. So. We're lucky. going to be like candles and rose petals. We're lucky we have a helper right too. And then, you, <laughs> and then you walk in every day and you're like, you're, I'm like checking the water to see if there's anything. Sure. Like, <laughs> yes. 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 A lot of water. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, it was the most like lunch? Emily engagement ever. In a sandwich. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Somebody. Did you see my The maroons, the wine vest. Hi, Anthony. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Heather. Nice to meet you. Hi, Heather. Cool. Look comfortable. So comfortable. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I'll see you. Thank you. Hey, wait. Uh, I'm going to sneak behind you. I mean, it's going to be what? Two okay. hours before we have to sweat. Do you have the lights on in the room? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Yeah. Unless the sun decides to be nice to us. See, the lighting here is fine. Why didn't we do that? I don't know. Why didn't we? Just in the dark. Well, it was like hard to see the small buttons. <laughs> 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 I think we just didn't think about it. I, I think we were so traumatized yes, by the sun from yesterday yeah, that we were just hiding from it. That's what's going to be so brutal. More yeah, I'm not too out of it. But it's going to be awesome. It's just hot. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's just hot. Awesome. Not awesome, just hot. No, it'll just be awesome. <laughs> You guys have any words of wisdom or advice for this young man? Words of wisdom? Them being wisdom. the unmarried bachelors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah, forget about us on the other side. Hey, yeah. you think you're paying us? <laughs> <laughs> Smile and nod. I see a gold in favor in your future. No! Oh, oh yeah! No, no, no. Absolutely! Yeah. 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 I remember first year. You were asking me for relationship advice. Yeah. Wow. In your office. You were asking for no relationship advice with Emily. I Specifically, I asked you about the Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. The Harry Potter. The Harry Potter. 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 She almost broke up with me because I wouldn't read the Harry Potter books. What? Wow. Wait, are you kidding? Have like, you almost? still not read them? No, I did. That's I just over a weekend. That they were important to her, and I was like, "Those were okay." What was my so advice? My advice was just fucking read them, wasn't it? Was yeah, your advice was just like, whatever, just, just do it. Just, <laughs> this was in the first year. That's a pretty all right. Good. Same I'll relationship for a relationship. Like, <laughs> read this three thousand pages. That was yeah, all awesome. nice. Yeah, yeah, this whole thing kind of unraveled while you're trying yeah. to get through your first year of grad school. Well, you know, that was right. All of it. They're not that long. Oh, they're not, though. They're, they're easy. Really, they're really easy. easy. Yeah, yeah, I guess, really I guess you could, yeah. You can do, yeah. like, one in a day. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. When did Emily first get yeah. to Ann Arbor? That was your uh, second She moved here right? April. April. But she visited a couple times beforehand. So. What? No, it's just crazy. It's been all of it. a long time. Mm -hmm. or... We're old. <laughs> After we were hanging out at college, I, uh, yeah. Did you kill our car. You I destroyed yes. our car in the process of going to see her all the time. Yes, and I turned off my phone for a month, and then when I turned it back on, for like a there month. was a yeah. Or you like a this man? You what went is to this? a cabin in the woods well, the, I, <laughs> for a month. <laughs> well, not not a cabin in the woods. That's a different movie. Um, but uh, no, I, I yeah, I went to New Hampshire with my family and helped them move to Jamaica, and I turned on my phone after a month after everyone left, and Emily had a voicemail there, and it was adorable. We started dating and my car exploded driving to and from Virginia, <laughs> from New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of capital costs in this relationship. Yeah! Our time yeah. investment in Harry Potter. She moved here, which is a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just get two dogs? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been thinking about that. Here's, just it here's the issue with that. Uh, I feel like animals get like half a human worth of voting power. And if you have four animals what in the house, then they can outvote you. Then, then oh, yeah. it's a voting block situation. Yeah. Yeah. How, who's interpreting the Wait, votes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Oh, ye
consolidation right now. Yes! I was on your side hierarchy. I was on your side at the beginning of the Jerry Banker on my back. Exactly. Yeah, there's like lines in the game. This is where the cat's on. Can I borrow you for a second and have you guys maybe shift over to this side of the room? Dogs look great. We can't let the dogs immigrate. They'll work for all the wrong colonies. <laughs> It's terrible. Okay, my, so my what else we're standing over here now. <laughs> it's just, we've decided that, uh...
be seated. Dearly beloved, friends, family, and honored guests, welcome everyone. We are gathered here today in these beautiful gardens to witness the marriage of two of the most extraordinary devoted people I know, Anthony and Emily. They are here today to join their lives, to bring their hearts and minds together so that they can stand united as husband and as wife. To all the guests, you are here today not just as witnesses, but as participants. You are inexorably a part of the bond between Anthony and Emily. It is you who have been there to share their moments of triumph, and it is you who have supported them through any misfortune and obstacles they have faced. Thank you for your overflowing friendship and kindness. To the family members, you have been linked to these two for their entire lives, and after today, you will be formally linked to a new family. Emily, I know that your family has already welcomed Anthony into their hearts. And Anthony, you know as well as I do that we already love Emily as a family member. These families have shaped Emily and Anthony since they were born. They have encouraged them in their passions and work and witnessed their transformation into the beautiful couple you see before you. I would like to thank all the family members for their support and love. Of course, I would be remiss if I did not thank the parents in particular, Linda and Curtis, Rose and Cleveland. Thank you for the kindness, courage, and humor you have instilled these, in these two that has led them to this point. To Anthony and Emily, today you join together as one, bound with the love you have for each other. This love you share, this invisible cord strung between your hearts, binding you closer than you ever imagined. This is why we are all here today. Victor Hugo once wrote, to love or have loved, that is enough. Ask nothing further. There is no other pearl to be found in the dark folds of life. One has only to glance at Anthony and Emily to be certain that they have found this pearl. They have found in one another a kind of completion, a devotion that even the most jaded among us can look to with joy. <laughs> to see the smile on Anthony's face when Emily walks in a room. To hear the laughter that pours out of Emily when Anthony is around. That is more than enough proof of the unconditional love shared by these two. Emily, I've known you for years and heard of you for longer. Ever since Anthony mentioned this bright young woman at UVA that he seems smitten with. The amount of joy and warmth surrounding you because of and for Anthony is nothing short of incredible. You have been his rock, his light, and his best friend throughout it all. And Anthony, who I've known since you were born, <laughs> the sheer force of the love, faith, and trust you have in Emily, and that she returns in kind, is astounding. I cannot exaggerate when I talk about just how happy she makes you and how much you would do for her. It's enough to make someone cry. <laughs> there will now be a reading. A poem by Maya Angelou, Touched by an Angel. We, unaccustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness, until love leaves its high, holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives, and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity in the flesh of love's light. We dare to be brave, and suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be, yet it is only love which sets us free. Today, the two of you agree to step forward together in life as husband and as wife, to make known to the world this bond that exists between you, to give a name and title to the connection you share. 
Of course, marriage is not simply a title. It is a promise. It is a promise that you will share in each other's happiness as well as sadness. It is a promise that you will be there to guide, support, and comfort one another in your lowest moments ahead. Today, you agree to share any burden between you, to serve as guiding lights for one another in any darkness that lies ahead. It is also a promise that you will share in each other's happiness, that you will grow and learn together, that you will, by your devotion and trust in one another, deepen and increase this love you share. As those here who have been married surely know, this is not simply a pledge to enjoy each other's company. This is a pledge to carve out a space in your soul, in your very being, for the other person to reside in. It's fitting then that this promise is being made between such caring, tender, and strong people. Please consider each other's hands so that you may see the gift they are to you. These are the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours together as you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and cherish you throughout the years, and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold you when fear or grief temporarily comes to you. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your eye, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These are the hands that will tenderly hold your children, the hands that will join your family as one. Lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours, still giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. And now the couple will exchange their vows. here today, I can't help but think back to those positively giddy days when we first started dating in August of 2013. I gushed about you to my journal, and <laughs> I can't say it any better now than I did then. I wrote, it is a humbling and heartening experience to show someone your flaws and have them reflected back to you as virtues. I have tremendous faith in what we have begun to build together. I believe in him, his mind, his passion, and his kindness. I have an unwavering source of joy in my life, unlike any joy I have ever tasted. This was three weeks after we started eating. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel it then, and I have felt it countless times over the past four years. I am my truest self when I am with you. You are the light of my life. Our relationship is and all, will always be my most unwavering source of joy. And in return, I will never stop believing in you, in your goodness, your intellect, and your potential. Anthony, I promise to love you in good times and in bad, when life seems easy and when it seems hard, when our love is simple and when it is an effort. I promise to listen to you and to learn from you, to support you and to accept your support. I promise to cherish you and our family above all things for the rest of the days of our lives. These things I promise you today and always. I love you. It's a, it's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Emily, I stand here today as the luckiest man in the world. You are, without a doubt, the most amazing person I have ever met, and somehow fate saw fit to allow me to be the one here today getting to pledge my love to you. And as part of that pledge, I promise to love you, to laugh with you, to explore with you, and to always encourage you no matter where our life takes us. I promise to stand by your side, not only through the good times, but through the bad times. And our love is what will get us through those times together. I promise to always cherish our partnership 
and to forever build on that brick by brick, step by step. I promise to always believe in us and our dreams and to do everything I can to help us accomplish those no matter what. <laughs> there, are, there are so many other things I would like to say to you about the hopes and dreams I have for us as a couple and as a married couple. But I don't, since I don't think I can keep everyone here for an hour, let me just end with this. You are my best friend, my soulmate, and my partner in life, now and forever. Emily. <laughs> Will you take Anthony to be your husband? Do you commit yourself to his happiness and self-fulfillment as a person? Do you promise to love, honor, and trust him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live? Anthony, will you take Emily to be your wife? Do you commit yourself to her happiness and self-fulfillment as a person? Do you promise to love, honor, and trust her in sickness and health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to her so long as you both shall live? I do. What tokens do you bring to give as a pledge that you will faithfully keep these vows? From the earliest times, the golden circle has been the symbol of married love. Wedding rings are made of gold to remind us that pure love is the most precious gift we can give one another. Being one unbroken circle, they symbolize unending love. As often as either of you sees these golden circles, you will be reminded of this high moment and of the pure, unending love that you have pledged to each other today. Anthony, repeat after me. Took to Emily. <laughs> Accept and wear this ring as a token of my love for you. Accept and wear this ring as a token of my love to you. And as a further promise of my intention, and a as a further promise of my intention, to be yours alone, to be yours alone. Emily? Anthony, accept and wear this ring as a token of my love for you. Accept and wear this ring as a token of my love for you. And as a further promise of my intention. And as a further promise of my intention. To be yours alone. To be yours alone. Having pledged their fidelity to one another, to love, honor and cherish one another in the presence of this gathering. It is my honor to now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you, for the first time as a married couple, Mr. Anthony Charles and Mrs. Emily Ricosi. Uh, to all the guests, uh, Emily and Anthony will greet people at the reception. 
Uh, Howard, for the extended family, uh, I urge you to stay in this area for photos. Oh, okay. Oh, how extended. Oh, come on, blow it for the... Oh. <laughs> Thanks. See the ring? Greatest best man. We're going to go down there, but I want to read like where she was hiding. Do you care to walk around? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This way. Yeah. 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 Oh. Congratulations. Nice to talk, guys. Thank you. We did change the Hey! Congratulations. Congratulations. You cried so much, Anna. <laughs> Anthony, this was a beautiful ceremony. We were very proud of you. It was very sweet and very hard for me to see you, to see you to take your vows. We wish you a lifetime of happiness. We wish to see you soon. Congratulations, Anthony. Congratulations, Anthony. And cut. Congratulations, Emily. Congratulations, Anthony. We are so happy for you. We loved your beautiful ceremony. It was just perfect. Congratulations, Emily and Anthony. I'm so happy that I could be here to celebrate with you. And I hope you have a wonderful time and a wonderful life. Anthony and Emily's wedding, well, it's beautiful, it's hot, we're a little sweaty, but all of it was beautiful. Beautiful bride, beautiful bride. And handsome groom. Emily, Anthony, this is your auntie and uncle. We love you, we wish you mazel tov, and this was the most beautiful wedding. You are the most beautiful bride. Get it, Gary. A hundred years <laughs> Pleasure, love, and success. Hi, Emily and Anthony. The wedding was beautiful. Emily, you were gorgeous. We loved every bit of it. We hope that you're as happy as we are. Yeah, the wedding was incredible. And we love you both. And we're going to be more part of your life. Whether you like it or not. We love you. It was a warm day in Ann Arbor, Michigan.
we wanted to express how much it means to us for all of you to be here and to share in the ceremony and participate with us. Um, we're just really excited to see this whole room full of friendly faces. And you all mean the world to us, so thank you. Alright, go back to eating. <laughs> Alright, this time we're going to turn the microphone over to the father of the bride, Curtis, for coming. Here he goes, here he goes. Alright, so I tried to memorize this, but I'm really stinking memorizing, so sorry. It's been written 15 times, so I think I'm okay to So, first off, I want to welcome everybody here. I mean, what an assortment of people from the Charles family to the Rakosis to the Hunters, the Havens. Um, all the friends and families, our Northern Virginia friends, our friends from California, all Anthony's physics friends, and all the MSW friends from Michigan, and UVA friends. And it's just such a cool assortment of hodgepods of all the people we love. We, cumulatively, and so it's great that this day was shared by all of you. So that was the part I couldn't remember. So, um, as I look at Emily, the bride, I can't help but reflect on this all the years I was lucky right enough to watch her grow and become the beautiful woman she is. She captured my heart on the day she was born, and I became more and more in awe of her as the years passed by. She's my little girl, my Lucy Bell, and my ray of sunlight. And no matter what her age, she'll always be those things to me. As a child, Emily Michelle was smart, strong, driven, loving, and a tad neurotic. <laughs> All right, more than a tan. But, but her longer journey to adulthood, she has picked up many skills, some from life experiences, some from hours of therapy, some from constant, unconditional love. Always wanting to become better in what she does, surprisingly fearless at times, and endeavoring to be a better person makes me unbelievably proud to be her father. Emily, I don't know if you looked outside, but there wasn't a cloud in the sky today. And that's because you found love. When I was walking her down the aisle, I cannot deny I felt a loss. I was losing my Lucy, or at least I was sharing my Lucy. I was giving my daughter away to be married, but then it dawned on me how happy she was. She found someone who made her glow. So now I gain a son. I know I'm sharing it with you, but I gave this one to you. <laughs> when I first met Anthony, I instantly knew he was a good young man. You could tell he had a great big heart and was way smarter than anybody in our family. <laughs> Thank goodness. Over the next few months, I saw Emily become happier and more confident in herself. He helped her into grad school. He helped her graduate as well. And now he is really supportive as she walks out the door to her job every day. Go Anthony. <laughs> Today I watch her marry a wonderful man. I'm, I'm th filled with pride and confident that she and Anthony are about to embark on a wonderful journey filled with love and happiness that can only come as man and wife. May the two of you always treat each other with love, compassion, lots of understanding, and kindness. I'd finally like to say a couple of thank yous. First, I gotta thank my great wife, Linda, who did everything and cared about everybody. Woo! She obsessed about everything. <laughs> and that's what makes things go well. And I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for you. So thanks and all. Uh, secondly, to the Charles family, I welcome you into our family, or we're sharing our families, and whether you like it, you're stuck with us. <laughs> and we're so happy you're here and part of this great celebration. And uh, thirdly, I want to welcome all of you again. This couldn't have happened. It wouldn't be the same day if it wasn't for everybody else that's here that's come from far and wide. So lastly, I ask you all to join me today in congratulating the groom and bride and wishing them all the best for their happy life together. Let's raise our glasses, which I forgot. Anthony and Emily, may your actual life together far exceed your dreams. Here, here. And here we win. No, I don't know. Yeah. No, because that's... Uh -huh. <laughs>
Let's get started. Okay, I have uh, a bunch of chicken scratches I wrote in the car on the way here while driving. <laughs> I can actually read them to you uh, because these are not intellectual notes. This is something that uh, has come from the heart of the last couple days that I've thought about after knowing the fact that I would be able to say a few words. And in fact, you'll find some similarities with what Curtis has just said. So this is uh, you know, a spontaneous invention from two fathers who feel very much alike about what's going on around them. Um, on behalf of Rose and I and the rest of the Charles family, we're just absolutely delighted to be here. We couldn't be happier in welcoming Emily into our family because that's how we see it. And I feel like Emily's already become a fixture in our household. I have to admit, it took us a long time to get to know Emily. Um, I think Zach mentioned having met her at some point in 2013. Did it take us until 2014 or 15? I am, I deeply regret because we really missed out. But having gotten to know her like we have, having come to visit us in New Hampshire, having stayed with us over several holidays in the last year or two, um, we think she's wonderful. And uh, I'll get more, I'll, I'll say more about that later. I think there's other adjectives coming up. <laughs> We're equally happy to share Anthony with uh, with such a lovely family uh, as uh, as uh, as you all are here. I mean, represented by so many of your extended family and friends here today. Um, in fact, in in my mind, the wedding um, kind of um, what is this word I wrote? Um, it effectively links our two families together, and Anthony and Emily are the bridge, and uh, that's another reason that we are delighted with all that's going on today. Um, a big part of our joy is, you know, I'm talking on behalf of the Charles family now, is just having seen Anthony mature and develop like he has over the last several years in particular. I, I just, I have such admiration for the confidence that he exudes now in what he does and, and who he knows he is and wants to be. And I, I, I give Emily a lot of the credit for that. Um, all of the credit for that. And um, for that reason, um, you know, we're very happy about uh, about this match. Um, so it's obvious uh, that they care about each other deeply and are very devoted to each other, and that's that's all we could want in, in a marriage partner. Page three. I was speeding at this time. My wife Rose and I are uh, we think very highly. Of Anthony. I need to compliment my own son. Um, he's always had a very big heart. Um, he's also always had a very good head on his shoulders. Um, but more than anything, and this goes for all of our children, we are just so proud that they have very strong moral compasses. That they're very ethical in what they do and how they think. They're very right thinking people. And um, for that, I give Rose a lot of the credit. And I feel like you know, if we had a little hand in that, then you know we've done our job as parents, um, and that's the most important value that we did hope to transfer down to them. Um, so, I have something written here. Um, um, and now we have Emily here. Now, Emily, um, we've seen in the time we've gotten to know her as having that same very strong moral fiber and ethical goodness in her. And you would expect that from somebody who's gone into social work as a profession. But we've also seen it in her daily interactions with us and with Anthony, and we're just delighted about that. She's also kind and generous. She's also smart and clever and savvy. <laughs> Practical. And, and she, has, she has the moral compass that I was speaking of, too. So, in effect, they're a great couple, and they're a great match for each other. And I might have had something on five page, page five, but it's empty, so let me just end <laughs> by saying <laughs> we're absolutely delighted to be here, and having been able to be a part of this wedding just overjoys us, and we look forward to many happy years together, enjoying your each other's company, and uh, how devoted you are to each other, and how much you care for each other will last you a long, long while. So, Drink up on to them. I have known Emily for many years. Twelve, actually.
uh, in that time, I have probably spent 50% of our friendship at her parents' house. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Emily's great, just ask Anthony. <laughs> but her parents' house was always the place to be. I once even made my mom drive there in a snowstorm so I could spend the weekend with them and didn't invite her to stay with us. <laughs> I have helped myself to their food, their movies, their books, their home computers, even her dad's caffeine-free Diet Coke stash that no one else is really supposed to touch. Pretended that someone else finished off the last one. <laughs> All of this is to say I have felt, felt very at home in their home. So on Emily's wedding day, I feel it appropriate to tell you the story of a different time when I felt utterly unwelcome in the Rokosi household. Oh, just wait. <laughs> Late summer of 2013, Emily called to tell me the boy she really liked was coming over for dinner to meet the family, and would I be interested in joining them? Never one to turn down a Rokosi invite, I thought, hell yeah, I'm not missing out on this. It would be my first time meeting him too. Anthony was already there when I arrived, and he, Emily, and I set out for a walk. Now when I say walk, what I really mean is third-wheeling my way around the neighborhood, <laughs> trailing, uh, pretending to take interest in their pre-dating banter, but mostly awkwardly trailing behind as the, oh, are you still here? <laughs> I went along with it though. Was worth seeing my friend so happy. Oh, 30 minutes that felt like three hours later we turned in time for dinner. <laughs> we took our barbecue to the backyard, settled in, and I sat back, content to watch Linda and Curtis poke fun at Emily and Anthony in the early years. <laughs> it was business as usual when conversation led to Harry Potter which it is wont to do among the Rokosis. <laughs> Emily and Jacob were in the throes of another Wizarding World debate when Anthony looked up over his food and casually said, Yeah, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at that, the table fell silent and I felt a chill. <laughs> Glued to the scene like a car accident, I started shouting in my head, Quick, Anthony, run for your life! <laughs> wide-eyed, wondering what clown Emily had just brought home. <laughs> Emily mumbled something about how she was going to try to make him a convert. And I thought to myself, guys, it was a nice run. The past two hours were something special. <laughs> Let's appreciate the beauty in the attempt. Skip to the end of the evening after dessert, we're on the front porch. The lovebirds on the swing, the rest of us scattered across chairs and steps. Dialogue turned to summer plans and Anthony's impending move to Michigan. It was civil, pleasant even. At about 9 o'clock, the parents and Jacob excused themselves. There were hugs, handshakes, and claps on the back, as all had been forgiven from the incident earlier. <laughs> Saying goodbye to the others, I got ready to sit back down. It was still early, after all. When out of the corner of my eye, I caught a look so piercing, I will take it to my grave. In a moment of best friend telepathy, Emily told me with no more than a single glance, if I did not leave them alone that instant, I would never again be invited back to the home of my church. That was all I needed to dash in, grab my purse, and quite literally flee. I would not long after discover that this very night I felt so unwelcome was the first night Emily and Anthony shared their first kiss. The night they decided to become a couple, despite a move that put them 600 miles apart. The night the, 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 night the world around them disappeared. Then the first night of the rest of their lives. As you sit here in front of us today, no longer two halves, but one whole. I urge you to remember that night. The nerves and excitement and awkwardness and magic you felt on the brink of true love. Carry that night with you the rest of your lives. Emily, there are simply aren't enough words. And Anthony, there aren't enough thank yous. <laughs> may you live forever in love, and may love live forever in you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'll now turn the microphone over to Maid of Honor Stanley Sully. I am the third tallest of the Charles Brothers. <laughs> and not to toot my own horn, but one of the most attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Top three. 
for sure. I'm not gonna make any bones about it. We love Anthony. I I see it in the way that I jump up for joy when I see him bawling as he recites his vows. I see it in the way that when he's in a group of friends, all of them are just vying for his attention just to hear a joke from him, get a glance from him, feel some love from him. I, I see it in the way that I and everyone else respond to the way he laughs, so pure and bubbly, and you, you, you just want to laugh yourself, and you're reminded that life is worth living. I love Anthony, and everyone here does too. And I was going back and trying to figure out why it is, like what, what is the rock? for my love for Anthony. And I think I finally found it. When I was young, I came up with this persona based on my brother. I called him Antho Man. He was a superhero that I made several doodles of in my classroom. Uh, did not pay much attention to the science quiz that day, but doesn't matter, several doodles. And even now and then, I, I call him that. And at first glance, I thought, you know, that's, that's just me being silly, but no. There, there was a reason that when I was sitting in my bed at night and I was sure there were monsters in the closet that I felt safe, that whenever I felt really down in life, I've never given up hope because I always knew that there was somebody there to pick me up. And even if they weren't next to me to pick me up, someone to look at and be like, that's where I can find joy and love and warmth. That is where I can find a person who is so close to being a sentient teddy bear. I, I just... I, it gives... It gives me faith in humanity and possibly teddy bear kind. I, you know, even when he hasn't been there, he's always been this place of comfort and security, like a smiley, happy sun that's always shining down on me. And I realized we love Anthony because he's, he's our superhero. And Emily, I want to thank you for making my superhero happy, for giving him a reason to constantly pick us up and make us happy and be that shining beacon of joy that we all enjoy. And you are absolutely none the less beautiful and wonderful and amazing than he is. And in time, I hope to see more of you and call you a superhero too. <laughs> so, welcome to the family, Emily. Check your sanity at the door. <laughs> I love you, man, and I hope I can always be there for you like you've been there for me, Antho Man. Aww. Thank you. We will be here to enter a man. Alright, this time we will be getting five. We all did! We all did! I hit it. The one for the game choked up. Eric did. We won. We all had. I don't Kind of dark for me. Oh, look out! 
Yeah. Everybody photo bombs. This is when your streak you have. Okay. Are we ruining the pictures? Ruining the Do you need help? We need a superhero smash pow zoom in the face. <laughs> No, I didn't wow. end up. I forgot it. I forgot my pearl bracelet. Oh, that's right. You were going to wear it. I brought it with me. Just by the mask. I have a little. Thank you for coming. There are little um, paper cups. Oh, okay. Okay. Still rocking out. <laughs> watch your hair. Oh, yeah, watch your hair. Then there's that crazy ant. Mm. 
Katie was freaking out. I must think we're famous or something. <laughs> you are. Sarah. Oh, you're right. Johnny. Show. No. Oh, I think that's Sorry. Your duty's done. You yeah, have done as fabulous a job as you could be expected. Except to give a thumbs up now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>